So this is the Z Fold 3, and I'll be honest, I really haven't been using it as my daily phone for the past two and a half months. That's because I was testing out the Pixel 6 on these phones. I was still using it on the daily for certain things, and now it's back to being my daily driver phone. For the past couple of weeks, you know, I've had a decent experience so far, and I want to talk about how it's held up after about five to six months, and if it's something still worth considering in 2022. So let's talk about it. As far as hardware design, I hate it and I love it at the same time. So I do love how this phone looks. I think this phone looks absolutely beautiful, premium, gorgeous, the matte green. It's kind of like a black matte green. I don't know, it's, it's in between the matte a black and a matte green. I just think it's a beautiful colorway and the phone itself is really well designed. It feels premium, it looks nice. I think it's a gorgeous device, but it's also a very heavy device. So it's a soft glass on the back as well. So when I'm holding it in the hand after a while, I started to get fatigue. My hand felt tired, it just felt weird, it felt uncomfortable after a while. So I wanted to try and use a case to help you know, fix that, but that only added more bulkiness. And depending on the case that you got, it also added some sharp edges on the, near the hinge because it wasn't protecting the hinge. So honestly, getting a case for this phone is a complicated mess. I did try to use a speaking clear case, but that case broke on me two different times, two different cases. And it was the front cover because it was so thin that it broke, but I ended up giving up on cases and went with a uh, skin instead. This is a leather skin by D brand. And honestly, this helped a bit with the whole fatigueness. Definitely felt like it was a little bit more grippier. Didn't feel as soft and as cold sometimes from the matte glass. So it definitely helped a little bit with the fatigueness, but it was still a heavy phone. So after a long use of period, I will definitely still feel a little bit of fatigue when using the phone closed like this, one-handed. Um, but again, with the cases and or me using a skin right now, it leaves the phone pretty exposed and pretty vulnerable in a way. But I tried to not baby it and I also try not to be super aggressive at the same time. But um, I do have some scuffs around the phone itself, on the hinge, and on the side. So there is definitely some wear and tear after some use, but um, that's kind of to expect from any phone, but just something to keep in mind. The hinge itself is still very smooth, still very responsive. It doesn't feel loose or too stiff. It feels absolutely right and absolutely fine. They definitely did an amazing job engineering that hinge so that it could definitely last um, a little, quite a while. So it's only been a couple months, but even then it's still feeling good. As far as power button and ports, you're getting USB-C at the bottom here. You also have your finger sensor on the right-hand side, which is also your power button. So having a physical finger sensor means it's gonna be pretty much reliable 100% of the time. You can also have it set up so that you just touch the finger sensor. You don't have to actually press down the power button. That kind of can be useful, but sometimes it leads to accidental unlocks or accidental failed attempts. So that's something to keep in mind. And you can use it also as a gesture tool. So you can just swipe down on the finger sensor and it can bring down the notification panel. Also, that leads to accidental touches where you don't mean to bring down a notification panel, but it accidentally happens. So just something to keep in mind. It's useful, but sometimes it can be annoying as well. You also have the volume rocker next to it on the top, and then you have your SIM slot tray at the very top, which doesn't have micro SD card support, which sucks, but at least you start out with 256 gigabytes of storage, which I haven't used up all the way yet. You also have some great sounding speakers on here, which in my opinion are fantastic. They sound loud, they sound proud, they sound great. So if you don't have earbuds around you or a speaker, you can definitely rely on this for listening to music. And it definitely sounds great when watching videos, movies, shows, whatever you would like to do. It will all sound fantastic on here. So as far as displays, as you know, the front display is a tall and narrow aspect ratio, which it does need some getting used to after a while. And you learn and build your habits on what it is worth using the front display for and what you like to do on the front display. Personally, I think you could definitely get by doing most things on here. So anything from you know checking social media, switching a song on, texting on here, taking phone calls, searching the web. Like if it's something quick that you need to do, you can definitely just do it on the front display and use it almost as like a normal phone. But it gets weird after a while because you know if you have big hands like I do, it just feels uncomfortable after a while and you have to resort to using the inner display. But it's still a sharp display, a smooth display. It looks crystal clean. I think oh, it's just a fine display. It's nothing crazy and it's also nothing amazing. It's just a simple display. And it also has been holding you up just fine as far as durability. And that's because it comes with a pre-installed screen protector. I did end up removing it because it started to form a bunch of bubbles. So it did make the phone feel a little bit more smoother on the edges because with the screen protector, you could feel the screen protector itself. So it felt a little bit sharp and weird, but now it feels a lot smoother and a lot nicer. So that's the front display. And as far as the inner display, I've got some worrying news, but first I'll tell you the display itself is still very sharp. 
very smooth. It feels good in the hand. Yes, you can feel the crease, but over time you get used to it. Um, it's still a great display for watching videos. If you can get over the crease, um, it's great for multitasking, great for all sorts of things. I think it's, it feels pretty close to glass. It does feel a little bit plasticky, but over time, like I said, you get used to it. And the under display camera, again, you definitely get used to it. It was one of those things that when you notice it, it's kind of annoying, but if you don't notice it and you're just doing your thing, you know, just using the phone. Every person I let borrow this phone didn't even notice it, which is amazing. Um, so it does its job. It's doing its job, which is hiding under display. It's great. But the camera quality, which we'll get to later, is pretty trash. But the crease, something that's worrying, that's happening, is when I'm in a white background or a white light environment on the screen itself, you can see these faint pink and green lines. I don't know when they started showing up. I just opened up my phone one time, went on Amazon, and I saw those lines. I was a little, I'm a little worried, not gonna lie. I don't know what's causing it. I don't know if it's the temperature, if like, because right now temperatures outside are very cold and I'm taking it out now instead of keeping it at home. I don't know if that's the reasoning. I don't know if it's just overuse over time. Am I unlucky and got a shit display? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it, but it is worrying. So I'm definitely gonna keep my eye on that to make sure it doesn't crack. Cause now I am a little worried that's gonna crack, but I'm gonna keep using it because what's the point of paying $1,800 for a phone if you're not gonna use it. So we're just gonna keep using it as it is. Fingers crossed nothing serious happens, but something to keep in mind right now. Um, and there also is like a lot of debris and like, not debris, but like dirt and not, not, not even dirt, <laughs> dust and, and like crap and junk that sometimes get caught around the screen protector because it still has it on. Um, I'm not gonna remove that anytime soon, but every now and then, you know, it'll get caught and you just gotta wipe it down every now and then just make sure you don't close it with that stuff like in the middle. Another thing I noticed is that when you go to open up the phone sometimes, it'll still be like a little bit of a bend into it. So you have to give it a little push so that it fully opens flat. I don't know if that's part of the hinge. I probably failed to mention that when talking about the hinge, but that's something I noticed as well. The screen itself is able to be used with an S Pen. So if you have the S Pen Pro or the S Pen Fold Edition, you can use that pen on the fold. Personally, I don't use the pen on the fold at all. I think I even lost it. I don't even know where it's at. If it was inside the phone itself, I probably would be using it more often, but I don't like the way you have to carry it. Either you carry it loose or you carry it with the case that sucks ass. There is a speaking case that you can buy, but I'm not into cases like I already said. So I'm not gonna buy that myself. So that's an option if you really wanted to. And the whole phone itself is IPX8 rated, which means it can survive some clean splashes of water. So if you accidentally get caught in the rain, you should be fine. But overall, as far as the hardware and design, I love the design. I definitely think it's a gorgeous phone, but the hardware stuff, there's some negatives that come with it. So there's some things to keep in mind. And I'm starting to get worried about whether or not this phone can survive the test of time. So as far as everyday usage and performance, it's got the Snapdragon 888 and 12GB of RAM. So on paper, it's supposed to translate to great performance. And really it does. So pretty much everything you throw at it, it can handle. So anything from social media browsing, multitasking, games, video watching, streaming, stuff like that, it can all handle it. It's been a great experience for the most part, but occasionally I do get those weird annoying bugs that happen every now and then. So when it comes to my usage, typically I use the front display for one task at a time. So if it's anything from social media, selecting a song, selecting a YouTube video, answering a quick task or taking a photo, I'll typically use the front display for that. But when I wanna do other stuff or multitask or play a game or something like that, I'll typically use the inner display. And when you're using the inner display, it opens it up to a lot of different features that the phone has. So one of those being the edge panel. So on the edge panel, you can pin this if you want. Personally, I just like to have it hidden. So this allows you to quickly set up shortcuts or shortcuts to apps that you also like to use. Also makes it easier to drag and drop stuff whenever you're trying to multitask as well. So I'll have my main apps on my home screen. And then when I wanna multitask, I'll either drag and drop an app or I'll open up my shortcuts that I made. And you can do this by clicking or quickly saving them on the uh, little settings that pops up when you're multitasking and adding them to your edge panel here. So for me, I like to use Reddit and YouTube a lot. So I'll quickly hit that and automatically opens up YouTube and Reddit for me, allowing me to browse Reddit and watch a video at the same time. I also have all my bank accounts set up in one quick shortcut so I can quickly open up all my accounts and check and see how my balances are doing. And you can have it set up in the settings so that all apps are able to be, you know, manipulated so that, they, so that they work in multitasking, or you can have it set up so that only apps that are designed and built to be multitask will work in, within the whole edge panel or show up in the edge panel so that you can dra drag and drop. Personally, I think you should take advantage, go into labs and set that up so that you can force all the apps to go into multitasking mode, because that's awesome. It just doesn't matter. Samsung takes it into their own hands and helps you be able to multitask and take advantage of the big screen. Another mode that works similar to that is flex mode. Basically allows you to flex your phone in like a kickstand type of way so that you can have all the stuff 
show up pretty much on the top screen. So not all apps are compatible with flex mode, but again, you can go into labs and force some apps to go into flex mode. I did that with all the streaming apps so that I can make sure that whenever I'm watching full screen and I'm gonna prop it up, I can quickly just get it to flex into flex mode so I can see all the stuff on the top part of the screen. So one of the apps I use the most in flex mode is YouTube. So usually I'll be watching a video in full screen, be walking around and I go to prop it up and put it on a desk or on a table and I go into flex mode, which is fine. You know, it functions fine. Then I go to unprop it and put it back into full screen. Sometimes I'll get a weird bug where the video gets stuck. So like I can't skip forward, I can't go backwards, I can't exit the video, it's just weird. So I have to reload the YouTube app. It happens every once in a while. It also happens when I'm in multitasking mode sometimes. So just weird things that happen now and then. Just some apps, like I said, aren't compatible with multitasking and flex mode. So Samsung forces them into that whole different modes. So sometimes you'll get some app crashes here and there, but not a big deal, not the end of the world, just weird things that happen now and then. There also is a weird bug where the auto, I don't know if it's a bug or not, or if it's just the auto rotate is just very aggressive on here. So I'll be using the phone like horizontally or vertically, however you want to consider this. I'll go to set it on the table and it switches the horizontal mode or it switches the orientation. It's a little annoying. I don't know why it does it sometimes. It's just, I noticed that the uh, auto rotate is just pretty aggressive sometimes. You can also use apps in full screen mode so you can take advantage of the big screen. Basically, I like to do that whenever I'm using like YouTube. I also like to do it when I'm playing games. This is a great device to play games on because it's a big screen and it's also very nice to play handheld. It's almost like a little mini DS in a way. So anything from like Minecraft to Call of Duty, Rocket League is one of my favorite games to play. There are, again, these apps aren't all compatible or customized to fit this specific ratio because it is an odd ratio. It's very almost squared like, but um, some apps are like overlapping and they're like different UI elements. So. But it still works, they still function, it's just fine. It's still functioning just fine. So I think it's a great screen to be able to use to play games. You can also use the stream stuff, but personally, I just like to stick to mobile games that I play on here. And some apps are optimized to work on the full screen mode here. So for example, all Samsung apps are optimized to work on full screen. They take advantage of the full screen. You can either have it take up the whole screen, it's like in standard mode, or you can have it do like a multi-list view. So basically all your settings are on one side and all your main stuff or your main um, app is on the right hand side. So it's up to you how you wanna use it, but you have that ability to do that. Some third party apps are also optimized, like YouTube, we've already discussed that, Spotify, Gmail, now, there's a lot of apps that are already pre-optimized, pre but then there's some that aren't. So some that are just stuck on or rely and are built on a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. For example, Snapchat and Instagram, those are built on a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So you can use it in full screen mode if you want to. But personally, I choose not to. But overall, I think it's been fun using this phone. It's, I love trying out different new things. So definitely like using this phone for that very reason. But let's move on to the cameras. So there are five cameras on here. You got three on the back, your main cameras, your front display camera, and you have your on display camera in the screen in the middle. So some of the middle one here is garbage. I'll be honest, it's pretty bad. You can use it as a webcam if you want to, you can prop it up. But in my opinion, I don't use it at all. Only thing I use it for is just facial recognition. So you have that set up, you, this can be used to recognize your face and get into the phone. Otherwise, that's the only thing I use it for. I definitely like the technology involved of it, but it's not a great camera to be used. The front one on the small display here, that's like your normal sized or normal camera on the front. You can use it for selfies. You know, you can use it for facial recognition. Don't really take a lot of selfies, but it's there if you want to. Your main cameras though, you got a decent, a decent camera here, a decent system. So you have your telephoto, your ultra wide, and your main. I wouldn't say this is the craziest main and craziest zoom, but it gets the job done for certain things. I definitely wish they would have added a better camera system on here, like the S21 Ultra system, just because you're paying big money for it. But I will be honest, I don't use my cameras a lot on my phone, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> but again, the price you're paying, I definitely want a better camera. But still, you're getting a decent camera on here. Photos look, you know, plenty good enough for me to just use for casual stuff, you know, for taking a photo of something important, that's fine. But I definitely prefer a phone like a Pixel phone or a, maybe even my S21 Ultra if I still had it, I would definitely prefer photos from there and also videos from there because again, you have more options there. This is a very simple camera but a simple camera that works just fine. You also have the ability to use those different modes. So if you want to use flex mode, you can to take use this as its own prop up stand. You can also take selfies with the back camera so you can view yourself on the back here on the front display and be able to take a selfie with this. So basically they could have gotten rid of this camera and gotten rid of the front inner display camera and just stuck with this and you would have been fine. So personally, I 
wish they could have done that, but it's still nice to have for facial recognition in my opinion. But um, yeah, you can use this for selfies and use this in different ways with all those different features and modes. But overall camera quality is, is okay. It's good enough definitely, but it's not the most craziest camera system you'll ever use. So as far as battery life, it's definitely gonna vary from user to user, but for me personally, I've had a decent experience. I will say that I had to reset my phone before switching over to it, just to freshen it up and clean it up a little bit before switching over to it again. And since I did that, that battery life has definitely been improved. Now, of course, that's probably because I got rid of all the junk and stuff that I didn't use anymore and cleaned up the background and stuff like that. But even then, I'm getting a decent experience right now. So on my non-heavy users days, days that I work, I won't be using my phone as often. I end with about 50% battery life but then in the night so that's pretty good so anywhere from like 30 to 50 on my heavy usage days i'll end with like 10 to 30 percent battery life so it's still lasting me the whole day which is great but it all again it's going to depend on your usage i would say on my heavy days i would get anywhere from four to five hours screen on time depending on how heavy i used it i'm um, also running things in the background and stuff like that um, but overall it's been a decent experience i'm sure over time it'll probably go back to how it used to be which was not that great of a battery life if you're gonna charge this phone, you have USB-C at the bottom, which is capable of 25 watts of charging. So that'll take roughly about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, you also have wireless charging, which I use for overnight charging. So I'll have flash charging turned off for wireless charging so that I can easily charge this at a slow rate. That way it doesn't spend the whole night charging. It will typically spend like four hours still on the battery or still on the charger, but better than like the whole six hours or seven hours that I sleep. You also have reverse wireless charging, don't personally use that, but if you want to charge someone else's device or your Samsung Buds or watch, you're more than able to on here as well. But overall, battery life so far right now has been a decent experience, but I definitely wish it'd be a little bit better. I wish that the battery itself was a bit bigger just so that it could last a little bit longer and keep that peace of mind. You can also protect your battery if you want to, but I don't do that, so it's up to you. So at the end of the day, what I recommend the Z4 3 in 2022? It's a tough one. It really is. It's expensive. It's got some questions going on with it. I would say if you're looking for a really good phone, no. I wouldn't recommend the Z4 III. For the price you're paying, you can get a really good phone from either the S22 series coming out, S21 itself, or even an iPhone if you want to, or a Pixel 6, I don't know. But if you're looking for a really good phone, I would say no, stay with the Z4 III. But if you want something new, fun, exciting, interesting, and you've got money and you don't really, you're willing to take a risk on it, I would say yeah. I love using this phone, it's so much fun using it, but I am worried. I am worried about what's going to happen with the inner display. We'll see what happens in the future. But otherwise, that's been it. Like if you got something out of this video. Subscribe for more videos. And peace.